I got a dilemma. You see, the square body blazer is sitting there without a transfer case because, uh, you know, it grenaded itself earlier. I'll post that video up here so you guys can see what happened to it. But I have been waiting on a Magnum Box 205 combination from ORD. This should be here any day. And then I can throw it back in and pull the blazer out of here and get the burb in here. But I'm still waiting on a bunch of parts for the burb. And here's where it gets interesting. I have a ton of killer stuff to put into the K30 blazer. I've got a new cam from Summit. I've got a Holly standalone uh, harness. I've got new parts. I've got new speed parts. I've got all kinds of good stuff. I've got a new dash to put in. And I, I, I know that's gonna take me a while, but if I don't start it now, it won't be done in time for the good weather and the trips I've got planned, namely full-size invasion coming up in March. And if I don't do it now, it's going to be on hold until pretty much the beginning of, you know, winter next year. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and bang out the cam swap and the harness swap and all that good stuff on the blazer while it's in here, while I'm waiting on parts for the burb. I still need to do all the axles for the burb. I've still got to get some more parts for the burb. So um, I can work on both at the same time. So do I, do I risk taking it down right now? Yes, yes I do. to my channel why not i post videos every week and all it takes is a click to that button right down there and you will be a subscriber to merrick's garage are going to be installing the new Summit cam. I've removed the intake, the heads uh, I've stripped down, so I basically I pulled the valve covers off, I pulled all the, um, all the, uh, the coils, uh, the fuel rails, the injectors, and the rockers, and now I just need to pull out the push rods, and I should be able to turn over the cam by hand. And as I'm doing that, I should be able to insert this 5 16 inch wooden dowel rod down either side of the engine valley to hold the lifters in place while I quickly swap out the, uh, the cam. The only thing I need to do now is to cut <laughs> this cross member so that the cam can come out. Because right now the cam is going to come directly and hit that. So I need to fix that and then uh, drop this guy in.
trans cooler and e locker. Let's get that in focus for you. Now that the trans cooler and e locker are running through that guy right up there, I no longer need these relays and fuses and all the craziness that comes with uh, traditional wiring. So I can pull those out, and I'm also going to try and relocate this guy down into the cradle right here. Uh, I think I can get better airflow through there for it too. envisioned it about a year ago, which is having the remote battery or the secondary battery and my trans cooler and the winch all tucked down here below the radiator, low center of gravity, out of the way, it's working good. So I was able to get, uh, this is all just mocked up, it's not in place yet. That's bolted in, this is not. Uh, but what I have done is I drilled these holes underneath for airflow. I'm gonna build a little, a little ram air tunnel here. So this will get a steady, consistent uh, flow of cold air. I pulled the, the knock sensors, uh, which were a nightmare because that front one was, was stripped, so I had to drill that guy out. Real talk right here. Okay, this is why people get intimidated by working on projects. Because if it was just unbolting something and bolting something else in its place that was going to be better and an improvement then everyone would do it but the struggle is first you've got to remove a ton of stuff and do it properly without breaking anything to get down to the part that you want to replace often and then if you do break something that's when it becomes real and in my case my front knock sensor was seized it broke i've had to drill it out it's time to put on my big boy pants and finish this job Tomorrow, I think I'm gonna start addressing the harness. What can come out, what needs to stay in. The harness is over here. This is the harness. I'm just starting to kind of get the layout together so I can get an idea of what's gonna go well. beehive springs when I did the install years ago. These are gonna be imperative with the new cam to maintain valve seat pressure. I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but let's try. Do you see that dot right down there on the cam gear, or the crank gear, sorry. That is my timing dot. And so is that. They both need to be lined up. Consider that the crank will make one revolution for every two revolutions of the timing gear, of the cam gear. So they need to be lined up. This one's good. Let's torque it down and keep moving. I started a Patreon account about a week ago, and I want to thank those of you who have already gone over and uh, committed your support. Boom, you guys rock. 
I'm specifically talking about Casey Cronquist. Way to go, Casey. TK Waldrop, you're my favorite, TK. Jeff Wells, probably the greatest Jeff I know. Carl Sandvik, I mean, studs, all of them. If you guys want to be in that esteemed group of individuals, head over to my Patreon page and take a look around. I can't wait to hear this thing. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't plan on biting off such a big project right now, but it turns out it's, fingers crossed, it's, it's not being that big of a project. If you guys do want to see a big project, I got a bunch of videos on when I four-linked this guy. I broke it down into two video series, one for the rear links and one for the front links. The rear links had a new frame build, so I'm going to link right up here to a frame build video I did that uh, is a lot of fabrication and way out of my league when I started it.